Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my NFL Week 4 predictions, as I will be predicting each and every NFL game for this week. And as it says at the bottom of the screen, play along, leave your picks in the comments. I'd love to hear uh, what you guys have for this week in terms of scores and predictions. As right here it says, last week, 11-5. Uh, Overall, 29-19, which is a significant improvement. Uh, as the last two weeks, I went 8-8. Eight and eight, So this is probably the best I've done so far through uh, three weeks. So hopefully we continue to build on that. Um, right here, I have the Packers winning 23-20 to um, on Thursday Night Football. Um, Green Bay, I love what I've seen from Jordan Love. Um, Offensively, I think the Packers obviously come down, coming back from 17 down to the New Orleans Saints last week. Um, I love the resilience of this team. Um, you know, I thought the game was obviously over uh, in the fourth quarter. They were able to make a massive comeback and rally. Um, their defense shut down the Saints, especially in that fourth quarter. Um, obviously, their car was hurt in that game, and Jameis Winston was a quarterback, which definitely changed the out, which changed the outlook of that game. Um, but I love Green Bay at home here, even on a short week. Um, they're at home. I actually have these teams splitting um, for the season, but this game's in Green Bay, so I love Green Bay winning 23 to 20 at home. Next off, we got the Atlanta Falcons um, playing the Jacksonville Jaguars. This game's in London. Um, Jacksonville obviously coming off a terrible loss last week to the Houston Texans. Um, 37-17. I was kind of surprised by that. I didn't think, you know, the Texans would be able to give them a game, really. I thought, you know, Jacksonville was clearly a better team on paper. Um, so that definitely surprised me a lot. You know, and the Atlanta Falcons, obviously, losing to, uh, to the Lions 20-6 last week. Um, you know, their offense didn't really do anything the whole game. You know, the Lions defense did a tremendous job of shutting down Desmond Ritter and that offense. Um, they couldn't really get any momentum going throughout that game. Um, but this game's in London. This should be an interesting game. I think this will be a low-scoring game just because I think both offenses, obviously, this past week did not perform well in terms of putting up points. Um, but I think this is a get-right game for the Jacksonville Jaguars and for Trevor Lawrence, obviously. They're definitely uh, looking to win to get back to 500. I think their team is obviously – a lot better than Atlanta Falcons. Now, Falcons do have a great defense, um, but I think it's going to come down to, obviously, who has the ball last. And I think, you know, the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars obviously will come down. And I think they'll win. Um, they'll get a field goal at the end of the game to win the game um, in London. You know, Jacksonville obviously has played really well in London in the last four or five years, I want to say. Um, so I got the Jacksonville Jaguars squeezing off a win here. Next up, I got the Dolphins at the Bills. I have the Bills winning 34-31. Now, obviously, the um, Miami Dolphins coming off that just that blowout win last week against the Denver Broncos at home, 70 to 20, um, which shocked me a lot. I did not think that you know it, they were going to score 70 points. You know, I thought Denver's defense, you know, going into this year, I thought they'd be much more improved. It just Hasn't been like that the first three games. They've given up too many points on defense. They're probably the worst defense, honestly, right now in the league, just giving up that many points through three weeks. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the Dolphins, obviously, their offense is probably the best in the league. You know, Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddell, and all those guys, they're very fast. Um, two, obviously, staying healthy so far. Um, we'll see how long that lasts. Hopefully he does stay healthy, you know, you know when he is on the field. Obviously, he's a special player to watch. Um, Buffalo, obviously, you know, coming off that 38-3 to win over the Washington Commanders last week. Uh, their defense has definitely got together um, the last few weeks. You know, I think they've been locked in. Um, you know, they had a little hiccup at, at the Jets week one with Aaron Rodgers going out with the injury. Um, but I like the Bills at home here. Um this game's at the, obviously the beginning of the year. I know it's probably not going to be as cold as, you know, as cold as it was 
if this game were to be later on in the year, but this game, I like Buffalo in this game. I think they continue to roll. Um, you know, they continue to uh, keep that momentum going into this game. Uh, obviously, they're going to have to score, obviously, offensively to be able to beat this Dolphins team. And you have to score at least 30-plus to beat the Dolphins. So, you know, if they can do that, I think they can be able to come off with a win. Uh, it should be a phenomenal game. This is probably the game of the week, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, this game is important in terms of, you know, records and uh, where teams are at the end of the year. So I think Buffalo responds here. I think they um, get a big win. Everyone's going to be going. Most people are going to be going with the Dolphins. So, but I'm going with the Buffalo Bills. I think these teams will split. Like I said at the beginning of the, uh, my season predictions at the beginning of the year, I think these teams will split. Um, these teams are pretty even matched. It's just going to come down to can Josh Allen keep down the turnovers and not make stupid decisions with the football. You know, if he can keep down the turnovers, um, then obviously they can keep up offensively. They should be able to come out on top in this game. So I like the Bills in this game, 34-31. Next up, I got the Ravens at the Browns. I have the Browns winning 21-17. Um, the Ravens obviously coming off a loss to the Indianapolis Colts last week, um, which obviously it kind of surprised me a little bit. And I know the weather last week was kind of rainy. You know, ball was kind of slippery in here and there, but um, I was expecting the Ravens to pull away in that game. I didn't think the Colts had enough offensively to be able to keep up without Anthony Richardson, obviously. Uh, Gardner Minshew obviously did a tremendous job of filling in and, and doing what he can um, to keep the Ravens in the game or keep the uh, Colts in that game. Um, obviously, the Colts' defense is pretty legit. Obviously, they were able to, you know, contain Lamar Jackson, not making them – you know, making them stay in that pocket, making them work for everything. So I think they, that was the main reason why they were able to uh, win that game. Their defense was phenomenal the whole game. And obviously the Ravens offense couldn't really get anything going. They only scored 19 points um, in that game against the Colts. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, this Ravens team, you know, they are talented, but they're going up against a really good Browns defense here. And I think, you know, Cleveland, you know, they shut down Derrick Henry in the offense last week. They got to Ryan Tannehill a lot. This Browns defense is legit. Like, I think, you know, if they continue to play at this level defensively, along with Deshaun Watson continue to, you know, get better each and every game, this team could be a contender. This team's definitely a, a, a Super Bowl contender. Um, you know, they have the defense. Miles Garrett, you know, he's going to be in the run for a uh, defensive player of the year. Um and stuff like that. You know, I, I just think he's that special of a player. And I, I like the Browns in this game. Obviously, at the beginning of the year, I didn't think the Browns would be able to beat this Ravens team. They obviously have owned the Browns over the past few years, but this is different. These are different times now. I think the Browns are much more improved on both sides of the ball. I know they lost Nick Chubb for this season, but they still have you know Cream Hunt. They still have enough pieces offensively to be able to uh, compete each and every week and throughout the season. Um, but I like the Browns in this game, 21-17. I think they'll be able to um, tame Lamar Jackson. Now, Lamar Jackson will make some plays, um, but I think the Browns will do just enough to be able to slow down this Ravens offense. They're able to shut down everyone else. And Lamar's going to you know, do his thing, but I think the Browns just have a little bit more. I think they'll be able to squeeze out a close win, 21-17 at home. Next up, this is probably the worst game of the week. Uh, Denver Broncos at the Chicago Bears. Um, obviously, like I said before, the Bear Broncos coming off of a t just a terrible loss, 70 to 20 at Miami. Um, their uh, their defense is probably the worst in the league right now. Um, but at the same time, it's hard for me to trust Chicago and anything they're doing right now. I just think Justin Fields. You know, people are questioning whether if he's a guy or not. Um, you know, there's a lot going on with the coaching staff and just throughout the organization. You know, like I said before, I just don't think Justin Fields is in the right situation in Chicago. I did not like him going there in the draft just because of the, you know, the culture and just the, the history there the past few years of them not being successful underachieving. Um, obviously, this Bears team has been disappointed. I think Trace Claypool 
has been very disappointing so far. I thought he would be able to stand out in Chicago after getting traded from Pittsburgh. Um, you know, DJ Moore, you know, just, you know, he's been disappointed as well. I think, you know, I think it's just more of Justin Fields not being able to give him the football. Um, you know, and then Justin Fields obviously not taking accountability um, for, you know, his play. You know, I think he needs to do better um, and just try to galvanize the troops. But at the end of the day, you know, between these two teams, I trust Denver a little bit more. I trust their coaching staff. You know, they took a big loss last week. I think they mounts back. A low score and ugly game. I like Denver to come out on top 14 to 10. Next up, we have the Steelers at the Texans. Uh, I have Pittsburgh winning 21 to 20. Um, I think this game is going to be a better game than people expect. Um, I think, you know, CJ Stroud. Obviously, coming off a big win against Jacksonville, 37-17, um, on the road in Jacksonville. I think, you know, they're going to be coming in this game with a lot of confidence. Um, they're going to feel like they can beat the Steelers team, obviously, with their deficiencies and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, Pittsburgh obviously came out with a big win and at the Raiders, 23-18. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, Matt Canada being out of the job. Um, you know, Steelers fans talking about they want him out, but, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I think Matt Canada responded. I think, you know, majority of that game, the play calls have been pretty well. They've been taking shots down the field. They were actually a bit creative offensively for once. Um, but at the same time, I think Pittsburgh just has a little bit more. I think their defense, I think, you know, TJ Watt will be able to get a few sacks on, on Stroud, and I think their defense is going to be a the difference in this game. I think they'll just be able to get a little bit more stops and Pittsburgh will do enough um, to be able to close this out 21-20. Next up, I have the Rams at the Colts. This is one of my upsets of the week. Um, uh, like I said before, Rams coming off a loss last night to Bengals 19-16. Uh, to uh, I really think the Rams really beat themselves last night. I really think they should have won that game if it weren't for the turnovers. Um, you know, the Bengals' defense obviously played with desperation, knowing that they couldn't fall to 0-3, so you have to give them credit there. Um, you know, Matthew Stafford, obviously a good veteran quarterback. You know, they still have Cooper Cup and those guys on offense, Aaron Donald on that defense. Um, and then for the Colts, I think, you know, like I said, they got a big win. Um, on the road at Baltimore, 22-19. I think they'll be able to uh, carry that momentum at home. This game's obviously in Indy. I think they'll be able to carry that big game on the road back at home. And I think they get a big win against the Rams, 26-24. to I will really like what Gardner Minshew has done, you know, filling in for Anthony Richardson um, at quarterback, along with the receiver, the receivers that they have offensively. I think I think the Colts. We'll be able to keep, uh, you know, stay in this game, and they'll come out on top by two points. Next up, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the New Orleans Saints. Um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers come off a loss to Philly, Philadelphia Eagles at home. Um, obviously, Tampa Bay did not play well throughout that game. You no know, Eagles, obviously. You know, the first couple of games with the Eagles, the defense hasn't been all that good, but I think their defense is starting to ramp up a little bit. I think they're starting to get after the quarterback more, holding teams uh, to low scoring averages. Um, I think, you know, that was the difference in that game. I think, you know, Tampa Bay just didn't have enough to beat the Eagles at home. And then for the Saints, uh, you know, they came off of a deflating loss, I believe. You know, they were up 17-0 against the Packers. Um, in Green Bay, they thought they had the game won, but, you know, Green Bay came storming back, and I think, you know, they're going to come out knowing that, you know, knowing that they blew an opportunity to win that game. I think they're going to come out here at home, uh, and there's no Derek Carr in this game, obviously. He's out with an injury, so Jameis Winston will be able to come in here, um, and I think he'll play well. You know, I think, you know, he's, he's going to be able to feed off the home crowd. Um, and their defense, obviously, is going to make plays and um, stuff like that. So I think, you know, that would be a difference in the game. If, if this game was in Tampa, I would be going with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, 
but something just tells me I just think the Saints are going to pull off a victory here at home. Uh, I think they'll bounce back knowing that they blew an opportunity last week at Green Bay. So I like the Saints 27-21 at home. Next up, I have the Bengals at the Titans. I have Bengals winning 21-13. Um, you know, Cincinnati coming off a big win. They needed to win that game last week. They couldn't have afforded to fall to 0-3. Um, you know, their defense got after Matt Stafford yesterday, and that offense, I think they did a tremendous job of, you know, keeping them off the field majority of the game um, and stuff like that. And the Titans obviously coming off with a disappointing loss at, in Cleveland. I thought the game would have been closer than the score anticipated. Um, you know, they Derrick Henry really got shut down against that good Browns defense. Phenomenal Browns defense. Um, you know, Tanhill obviously did not play well. He needs to play better. He needs to do better in this game. But at the end of the day, I you know Joe Burrow obviously isn't hundred percent. He's played I thought he played decent last night, wasn't the best, but if he's playing, I like the Bengals. I just think the Bengals have more talent offensively and defensively. The Titans will be in the game. They'll be competitive. But I just think the Bengals have a little bit more. Um, obviously, if Joe Burrow's playing, I'm going with the Cincinnati Bengals. If he wasn't, I would go with the Titans. But, you know, I just think the Bengals have a little bit more. Um, they're just a better football team, to be, to be exact. So I like the Bengals in this game, 21-13. Next up, we got the Washington Commanders at the Philadelphia Eagles. I like the Philadelphia Eagles winning this game 31-17. Um, you know, the Commanders coming off, you know, did not play well last week at, at home against Buffalo Bills. You know, I really thought that game would have been a lot closer. You know, they they just they just couldn't get anything going offensively in that game um, against the against that Bills defense. Um, and then they're coming on the road here at Philadelphia, who's, you know, who's rolling right now. I mean, they, you know, Got the Super Bowl last year, and then they, now they're three and zero through three weeks, and I think they continue to roll here over the Commanders. Obviously, they're a better roster. Uh, I think their defense will be able to get after Sam Howell. Uh, they'll probably even get a few sacks, maybe even a pick six. And I just think the Eagles overall just a better roster. You know, Jalen Hurts will have a big game. I think their offense around them will have a big game. And, you know, not much to say. I think the Eagles are just a better team overall. Uh, Commanders, you know, they have a solid defense, but they're not – they don't have the weapons offensively to be able to keep up. So, Eagles 31-17. Next up, we got the winless teams, the Minnesota Vikings at the Carolina Panthers. I like the Vikings coming on top 27-19. to um, You know, Minnesota obviously coming off uh, – a game that I thought they should have won last week against the Chargers. They came up short 20-24 at home. Um, you know, the NFC obviously is a lot weaker. You know, if this if they were if the Minnesota Vikings they were in the AFC, they would probably be screwed just because AFC is so tough. It's more competitive. But overall, I think they're fine still, even though they're 0-3. Um, the Carolina Panthers obviously losing last week to the Seattle um to the Seattle Seahawks on the road. You know, the, the 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 thing with the Panthers right now, they just got to go through, they're going through a lot of growing pains right now. You know, they're trying to learn how to win, and they're just not able to come out on top of these games. I think they're just going to have to be patient, continue to let um, Bryce Young develop as a quarterback and the weapons around them and stuff like that. But Minnesota is due for, they're, they're in for a win here. I just think they're better overall than the Carolina Panthers. I think Justin or Jefferson will have a big game. Kirk Cousins should have a, a pretty pretty solid day as well. So I like the Vikings to get their first win on the road in Carolina 27-19. Next up, we have the Raiders at the Chargers. I like the Chargers winning this game 27-20. Obviously, like I said about the Chargers, they came off a big win on the road in Minnesota. Um, they couldn't afford to fall to 0-3 uh, with, with possibilities of their head coach being fired in any year. So I think, you know, they're safe for right now in terms of that. Um, you know, I, I like them coming back at home and building off of last week against this Raider team, obviously. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo right now is in concussion protocol. We don't know if he's going to be playing or not. But regardless, this game's at, at home in L.A. I like the Chargers to win this game 27-20. to Justin Herbert should have a pretty good game as well. Um, you know, if Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't play, I expect this Chargers defense to – 
um, get some pressure on them and, and uh, get to that Raiders offense. Um, Devontae Adams is a phenomenal player, but he's their only good player. I think they'll be able to find a way to shut him down, whether they send a double team or whatever they decide to do um, in that area. But the Chargers win 27-20 at home. Next up, I have the New England Patriots at the Dallas Cowboys. I like the Patriots in this game. This is my uh, another one of my upsets of the week. Patriots winning 20-17. Um, starting with the Patriots, they came off, obviously, an ugly win last week. On the road at the Jets, 15-10. Obviously, the Jets, one of the best defenses in the league. Um, and same with the Patriots. They held the Jets to 10 points. I think their defense is one of the best in the league. Um, you know, I think the defense obviously is going to get after Dak Prescott. You know, I think what, what's going to what's going to be the difference in the game is, you know, Bill Belichick is going to take away the other team's best player, and he's just a phenomenal guru at that. You know, he's very phenomenal doing that. Defense, like I said, uh, like I said before, the Patriots defense, as long as they continue playing the way they're playing. They're going to be in every single game. Nobody is going to blow out the Patriots. So let's just get that straight, okay? This defense is too good. Their defense is going to keep them in every game. I'm not saying they're going to win every game. But their defense, they're going to, they'll be competitive enough where they'll keep them, the defense will keep them in games. It's just going to be a matter of, can Matt Jones and that offense, and I think they're a little bit more improved what this year under Bill O'Brien instead of Matt Patricia last year. But if their offense can get a little bit more consistent, Put up a little bit more points to try to help the defense out a little bit. That would help. But like I said, overall, this defense is going to show up each and every week. They're going to they're going to ball out. And then the Cowboys, obviously, their defense is legit too. I think they're the best defense in football. They took a little bit of a hiccup last week in Arizona. Um, you know, the Cardinals are obviously the run up, were able to run against that run up the middle against that defense. So I'm not sure what happened there, but um, it's going to come down to you know the quarterback. I think whoever has you know, Matt Jones didn't have any turnovers last week against the Jets. Um, no, obviously, Dak Prescott had an interception. So I think if the Patriots can get pressure uh, on Dak Prescott, make him, you know, st- make him be in that pocket, not make him, uh, you know, nothing, you know, limit him, uh, not run outside, keep him in that pocket. I think if the Patriots defense can keep him in that pocket, you know, I think, you know, get and get pressure on them, force turnovers, they're going to come out on top of this game. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I don't think the Cowboys are going to score more than maybe, I don't know, more than 20 points against our defense. I think our defense is too good. Um, it's just going to come down to, you know, which quarterback can have the least amount of turnovers and just play fundamentally, fundamentally sound football is going to come out on top of this game. So I like the Patriots in this game. This is a good matchup. I think they match up, these two teams match up well with one another. It's just going to come down to, the quarterbacks and who has least amount of turnovers. So I like the Patriots on top, 20-17. Next up, we have the Arizona Cardinals at the San Francisco 49ers. I like the 49ers win this game 31-14. Obviously, uh, Arizona so far is 3-0 against the spread. I think they are, let's see, 14-point underdogs last time I checked. Um, I think that you know this is the spread that they won't be able to cover. I just think the 49ers, like I said at the beginning of the year, they're just complete. There's no weaknesses with the 49ers. They have a defense. They have the offense. They have the coaching staff. They have a good scheme. Everything that you can say about the team, they just don't have no weakness. You know, Brock Purdy is a phenomenal quarterback. You know, they have a running game with Christian McCaffrey. And the receiving core, just in the coaches, they just don't have no weakness uh, in their team. They have no cracks on their defense. Defense is rock solid, um, best in the league right now. I think they'll be able to get after, um, get after the Cardinals offensively. I just don't think the Cardinals have enough. They got a big win last week at home against Dallas, but I think you know, you know, I I, just, I think that. Obviously, the 49ers are just a way better team than the Cardinals right now. Um, and I think the 49ers are going to come out and show why, you know, they're the team to beat in the NFC. So, I like the car, I like the uh, 49ers 31-14 at home. Uh, I don't think this will be much of a game. I think the Cardinals will be able to score in garbage time, but that's about it. But 49ers on top.
Next, we have a Sunday night football edition. We have the Kansas City Chiefs at the New York Jets. Um, this was supposed to be Patrick Mahomes versus Aaron Rodgers. I would have loved to see Aaron Rodgers versus Patrick Mahomes. But obviously, we don't have that. This is Mahomes versus Wilson. Um, let's start with the Jets, for example. Obviously, they, they, need, they need to get a new quarterback, in my opinion. I just don't think Zach Wilson is the answer for that team. Obviously, they spent all their, you know, money on Aaron Rodgers and not, you know, not the backup quarterback, knowing that, you know, if Aaron Rodgers were to get hurt, now they're stuck with Zach Wilson. Now, they'll, now they don't have another quarterback they can get. Now, I've heard that they probably will get, like, Kirk Cousins or maybe Carson Wentz or Matt Ryan. I just don't, but, the, but the reality of the situation is I don't think Matt Ryan is going to come out of retirement. He's up in the booth right now, I believe, at Fox or whatever. Um, you know, Carson Wentz, even if he does come in and learn a playbook, is he going to make a difference for you, really? And then uh, Kirk Cousins, you know, I just don't see Kirk Cousins going to the Jets. You know, I still think there's time for the Minnesota Vikings. You know, they're 0-3 right now. There's still time for them to turn the season around in the weak NFC. I just don't see the Jets really making another change at quarterback. I think Zach Wilson, they're going to have to just ride with Zach Wilson. Obviously, their coaching staff does not trust Zach Wilson to throw the football and stuff like that. So they're just going to have to pound that rock and run the football every time. If that, that's what it's going to take to win, then they do it. Then do it. But... Obviously, they, Zach Wilson is not the answer for the Jets in terms of, like, I'm just talking about in terms of long term and stuff like that. You know, Zach Wilson has no confidence right now. You know, the players around him in the locker room don't have confidence in him. And even the coach, Robert Saul, they, they, he doesn't have confidence in his own quarterback, even though he's been defending him. But in his own head, he knows that Zach Wilson ain't the answer for the Jets. And there's been, you know, I think it's a situation where, I think they're starting to split a little bit. This Jets team is starting to, you know, it's starting to implode a little bit, knowing that, you know, all the expectations that they had before the season, going into the season, they had Super Bowl aspirations. They, you know, they were talking about Super Bowl, winning Super Bowl, coming out the AFC with Aaron Rodgers. But that's come down to earth right now. I think the Jets are back to reality um, and stuff like that. I just don't think they're, they don't have the piece offensively. They do have the receivers offensively. They just don't have the quarterback. I think the quarterback is holding them back. Their defense is legit. I think their defense will be able to. Their defense will be able to keep them in the game for a little bit. But their defense going to do so much. Um, you know, their defense is pretty much on the field the whole game just because Zach Wilson is just not a good quarterback. You know, they're just limited with at the quarterback position. Um, and then obviously you can't say Chiefs coming off. Of a just a dominant performance at home against Chicago, forty-one to ten. Um, you know the Chiefs have figured it out. I mean, like I said, they're still the team to beat in the AFC until further notice. Um, their defense has, has gotten a lot better uh, from week one. I think their defense has definitely got you know the last couple of weeks held, holding the Jacksonville Jaguars to nine points and then holding the obviously the Bears to ten points. You know I just think they continue to ride that momentum going into this game knowing that there's no uh, Aaron Rodgers, Zach Wilson's under center. You know, I think the, the Chiefs' defense will be able to get after Zach Wilson. They'll probably even force him to maybe two or three interceptions, maybe a pick six here and there. Um, Mahomes will have a big game. He'll have, he'll have a field day. Um, you know, the Jets' defense will be, like I said, they'll be able to make some plays, but I think Patrick Mahomes, with, just, with how gifted he is as a quarterback, I think he'll be able to make more plays, and there just won't be an answer. The Jets' defense will eventually wear down as the game goes on and stuff like that. So I like the Chiefs to win this game 20 to 10. I'm not really sure why this game is still in prime time, especially with Aaron Rodgers being gone. I really figured they would have probably put another game on, uh, put another game in the slot. I guess they wanted to keep the games or keep this game where it is. So, but the Chiefs will win 20 to 10. Uh, next up, I have the Seattle Seahawks at the New York Giants. Monday Night Football, I have the Seahawks coming on top 23-16, obviously. Uh, the Seahawks coming off of a win last week against Carolina. Um, you know, uh, Geno Smith, obviously, has had a pretty good season so far. I think their offense will be able to uh, get after that defense. Um, it should be a close game. Obviously, the Giants, their defense is pretty good, obviously, outside of week one. But I think their defense is, is pretty solid overall. 
Um, there's no Saquon Barkley. Obviously, he's out for the season. Um, you know, if he was playing, I probably would pick the Giants to win. I just don't think, you know, obviously with him being out, I just, I just don't think there's able to, they're able to. There's no, I mean, there's no replacing Saquon Barkley. So I just don't think they have enough in terms of the run game aspect. But I like the Seahawks in this game. They think Geno Smith obviously would make more plays. Daniel Jones. Um, you know, I'm not really sold with Daniel Jones. I've never really been sold with Daniel Jones. Um, I still don't think he's the answer for the Giants long term, in my opinion, in terms of you know where they want to go, where they're where they're trying to get as a team. Um, yeah, like I said, I just don't think he's the answer for that team long term. I think they need to try, you know, if, if they end up missing the playoffs this year and then beyond, I think they need to try to move in a different direction there, but. Seahawks, I think their defense is, uh, will be able to get after Daniel Jones a little bit. Maybe you can get a pick here. Um, but I just think overall, Seahawks just have better talent than the Giants right now. Without Saquon Barkley, I just don't think they have enough in terms of in the run game aspect. Um, Daniel Jones probably will throw an interception this game, which will be a difference. So I like the Seahawks to win this game 23-16 to in prime time. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel, Keaton Talk Sports. Um, link is in the description. Follow me on Instagram as well, Keaton underscore McNair. Um, hope you guys have a good one. Enjoy the week four of football, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.